Sagittarius A, the supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy, is only 4.15 million solar masses in size. The Event Horizon Telescope recently released a stunning submillimeter image of itself illuminated by its glowing surroundings. Many galaxies have nuclear supermassive black holes that are a thousand times larger, such as M87's nucleus, which was photographed by the Event Horizon Telescope in 2020. However, Sagittarius A is relatively close to us, only about 25,000 light years away, and its proximity provides astronomers with a unique opportunity to investigate the properties of supermassive black holes. As gas and dust slowly accrete onto a black hole's surrounding hot, disk-like environment, they emit electromagnetic radiation across the spectrum. The episodic accretion and variable radiation bursts provide information about the nature of the accretion, the dimensions and locations of each event in the black hole's complex environment in or near the torus, in some parts of the wind, and how the episodes may be related to one another and to black hole properties such as spin. Each wavelength carries its own information, and one of the key diagnostic tools is the time difference between flares at different wavelengths, which traces where the various production mechanisms occur during the outburst. Since its discovery in the 1950s, Sagittarius A has been monitored at radio wavelengths. On average, Sagittarius A accretes material at a very low rate, a few hundredths of an Earth mass per year, but enough to produce variability as well as more dramatic flares. The Center for Astrophysics astronomers Steve Wilner, Giovanni Fazio, Mark Gorwell, Joe Hora, and Howard Smith, as well as their colleagues, have completed a timing analysis of coordinated, simultaneous near-infrared, X-ray, and submillimeter observations of Sagittarius A using Spitzer's Iraq camera, Chandra's X-ray observatory, the New Star mission, ALMA, and the gravity instrument on the Very Large Telescope Interferometer. Between July 17 and July 26, 2019, there were flare-ups. Unfortunately, the SMA was shut down at that time due to protests on the mountain. The team observes that 2019 activity appears to have an unusually high accretion rate. While some of the events occurred concurrently, the submillimeter flaring appeared approximately 20 minutes after the infrared and X-ray flares, Chandra. The scientists consider three scenarios. The infrared and X-ray emission in these flares were produced by charged particles spiraling in powerful magnetic fields. The infrared and submillimeter emissions were produced by this first process, but the X-ray emission was produced when infrared photons collided with charged particles moving near the speed of light. And finally, only the submillimeter radiation was produced by the first process and all the other bands were produced by the second. Unfortunately, ground-based observations cannot be continuous, so the time of the peak of the submillimeter emission flare was not observed, making it difficult to pinpoint any time delay between it and the X-rays that could indicate it is originating in a different location or from a different process. When the team's findings are combined with previous variability studies, they arrive at a consistent picture in which infrared and X-ray emissions originate from the second process, followed by submillimeter emissions from the first in an expanding, cooling magnetized plasma. If you want to learn more about space and stay on top of astronomy news and updates, subscribe to the channel, and for more information about these observations, check the video description. Thanks for watching.